Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Mike Friesan, and with us for our program today, Assemblyman Steve McLaughlin. Steve McLaughlin represents the 107th Assembly District. That's an assembly district that includes parts of Rensselaer, Columbia, and Washington counties. We want to thank you folks all throughout the Greater Capital District region for being here today. And Steve McLaughlin, we start off yet another episode of this program this year talking about corruption at the state capitol. This is the week that uh, one of those people, there's been a huge spotlight uh, uh, cast on Assemblyman Vito Lopez of mm -hmm. New York City uh, with charges of sexual harassment. This is the week that Assemblyman Lopez decides to step down and resign his seat in the New York State Assembly. Mm -hmm. Some people look at that as closure, but others are looking at it as just the beginning of you know, a, a discussion of how this all came to be in the first place and where it's going to go from here. Yeah, well, it's a it's a very long discussion. We could probably spend an hour talking about it, but I don't look at it as closure. I just look at it as one down and, and many more to go. Uh, it was the right thing for Vito Lopez to go. What he did was despicable, uh, but it's also the right thing for Sheldon Silver to go, and it's the wrong thing for this governor not to call for Sheldon Silver to step down. So Sheldon Silver enabled Vito Lopez, Andrew Cuomo, is enabling Sheldon Silver. Uh, you know, Sheldon Silver has repeatedly covered up sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and rape in this chamber. His own chief counsel a few years ago was hauled out in handcuffs, Michael Boxley. He's now back as a paid lobbyist, but, but yet the speaker says, well, he won't have anything to do with the Democrats. That's nonsense. Why would he be hired as a lobbyist if not for his connections? So uh, this is a systemic problem. It goes back over a decade with this speaker. And for my Democrat colleagues not to have the backbone and the courage to stand up to this is really disgusting. And it's, it angers me uh, greatly that they had a chance yesterday to stand up and do the right thing. But like good little sheep, they ran behind their shepherd. And not only do they not condemn him, they actually support him vocally. And I would say if you're not condemning this, you're condoning it and they're condoning it, and they should be ashamed. There's about 100 members to the Democratic Conference in the Assembly that the Speaker oversees. One member one. Uh, decided to say that he was not going to be, until, until the Speaker was gone, he wouldn't be meeting with them. Yeah, that's Mickey Kearns, who's a great guy. Mickey's a good friend, and, and one out of 104, hard to keep track with all their indictments and arrests lately, but I think there's 104. I think we're down a few, but... Uh, uh, one, I imagine that, one. And all we need is about 35 or 36 of them to add to our votes, all of the Republican votes, and we could throw this man out of office as the Speaker. He wouldn't be removed as an Assemblyman, but they could remove him as Speaker. They chose to protect themselves and not to protect the women that work here in this building, and it's disgusting. You, you know, you hear so much about uh, sexual harassment in the workplace, and you hear these speeches and the debate on the Assembly floor, it is empty rhetoric, disappointing. I guess uh, I don't. I don't know what word to use uh, in terms that you were not hearing it now in mm -hmm. connection with this. It's like it. It's like well, it applies everywhere except here. Yeah. Well, it's disingenuous. I mean, it just shows that it's just hollow talk. And all we get during the campaign is this war on women, this Republican war on women. I think the Democrats need to shut up because that narrative is over because they had the chance to do something solid for women to protect the women that work here in this building, and they chose not to. They chose to turn a blind eye to it. And we've heard things like, oh, well, mistakes were made, and the past is the past. Where does that sound a little bit familiar? That sounds like Hillary Clinton talking about Benghazi. Uh, this is not past. This is an a ongoing problem with this speaker. It is systemic, and I would say it's corruption, and it's covering up. Sheldon Silver uh, avoided the Assembly Ethics Committee. This is one of his many mistakes. He avoids the Assembly Ethics Committee. He uses taxpayer funds of $103,000 to silence the victims. And then he says, then he lies to the Attorney General, lies to the Comptroller, saying that, this, that the payment was for legal services. It was not. It was for a settlement to keep these victims quiet. Then he goes on to lie and say that the victims requested the confidentiality agreement. That isn't true. Vito Lopez apparently requested the confidentiality agreement, and Sheldon Silver was all too happy to grant that request because he was more concerned about protecting the institution and protecting his assembly member, Vito Lopez, who's a serial harasser, 
uh, from, from being exposed. So he didn't care about those women. He cared about protecting the institution. I'm disgusted by it, as you can tell from my voice and, and my demeanor here. Uh, and New Yorkers deserve better than this. And this isn't over. And if I find out that that check was mailed to those women, he should be pursued for mail fraud. This needs to stop. And I think New Yorkers have every single right to be outraged and have no confidence in their state government at this point. And that goes from Andrew Cuomo all the way down. And the Lopez uh, is situation is just but one case uh, involving this legislature right now. There continues to be other members of the legislature still sitting in their chairs in the assembly chamber and the senate chamber facing other types of charges ranging from uh, uh, government malfeasance and misrepresentation in terms of travel expenses and such all the way up to corruption and bribery. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you could point to William Boylan, you can point to a couple of others that are under indictment uh, in the senate and the assembly, but in Boylan's case, uh, the small stuff, $4,500 in parking charge, in parking fines. That's small for William Boylan. The big stuff, he's facing 200 years in prison for mail fraud and corruption, soliciting bribes from undercover FBI agents. He's been sued by the Board of Elections 40 times for not filing required campaign finance reports. So all this talk from the governor about campaign finance reform, how about you clean up your own party? How about you get the people that, that you, uh, that support you and that you support, how about you get them to file their required reports but before you come talking about brand new laws that aren't going to fix the problem anyway. So it's pretty frustrating to watch a guy like William Boylan sitting in that chamber uh, day after day. Why isn't Andrew Cuomo calling for him to go? We know that he stole money from the taxpayers. We know that he filed over 300 false per diem reports. He admitted it. He admitted such. it. It's not conjecture. Yeah. The controller is holding his current per diem money in, in an effort to try to get back a little bit of the $67,000 that, that he stole. So at what point do, uh, do, do people kind of look and say, this is not working here, folks, and start throwing some people out of office? And one way to do that would be to pass our recall bill that we proposed so that you can recall bad politicians. You talked about uh, the governor's proposal for campaign finance reform. You, we're hearing the same thing from the speaker. Well, more than hearing about it, the speaker put a bill on the assembly floor, yeah. which he called the Fair Elections Act, and he put that out there as one of the ways to fix this corruption situation that goes on here at the state capitol. Right. Uh, you spoke out against it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You didn't seem to think that this is really going to have much of any impact. It isn't going to have any impact at all. And if you look, what do they do? They hold up New York City as like this bastion of what campaign finance reform can be and what public financing is. Uh, New York City is a cesspool of corruption. I, I hate, I'm sure everybody watching this knows that. It's a real problem down there from the comptroller on down. Part of the reason Anthony Weiner is putting up a, a run for mayor so that he can grab this public money. It's a six to one match. Part of the reason Vito Lopez wants to continue to run for city council is he can grab eighty or eighty-eight thousand dollars worth of public money. When people hear that uh, they want uh, taxpayer finance or public funding of campaigns, that sounds kind of good. But when they realize, wait a minute, that's taxpayer money and it's going to cost us a couple hundred million dollars a year, they're not so keen on the idea. Of course, the, the other side never really wants to tell you about that. They want to kind of admit that it's taxpayer money in a state that is dead broke. I mean, if we had extra money lying around and he, we had a surplus, you could maybe talk about this. But we just cut $90 million from, from people with developmental disabilities. But yet we're going to fund our campaigns. And the truth is this. As a member of the minority, it would make my life so much easier to have public financing a campaign. So if I go out and raise 100,000, I get another five or 600,000 from the taxpayers. That would make my life easier. I still voted no, because that is absolutely the wrong thing to do for the people of this state. Let me show the folks watching some of the things that Steve McLaughlin did say on the floor when that bill came up for debate. In a week like this that we've just gone through, in a month like this where people are getting indicted left and right, we bring this out, and, and the sentiment may be there to try to remove the money from politics. This is not going to do it. This allows uh, all kinds of loopholes to take place. We have a, a state budget that is in deficit constantly. I don't know where this money is going to come from. This is taxpayer money. We can call it the general fund, but it is the taxpayers of New York who will foot this bill. And when asked the questions, do you support public financing, pretty much they all say yes, it sounds good. When you ask, do you support public financing with your tax dollars, overwhelmingly they say no. So they get it. When they're phrased the question correctly, they understand what's going on. We cut $110 million from people with OPWDD. We fought for hours on this floor, a long debate about restoring that money. What did we get back? 
30 million. They're still down 90 million dollars. But yet, we're going to talk about funding our campaigns with public money, with taxpayer money, rather than take care of people that need it the most. It makes no sense to me. And I think when the people watch this debate that took place today, it's going to make no sense to them as well. They get it. They understand what's going on here. This is an incumbent reelection scheme. Does not need to be done. And quite, quite frankly, as a member of the minority, it would make my life a lot easier. I can easily go out and raise 100 grand and get another 600 grand from the state taxpayers. That really makes our life easier in the minority. But it's still the wrong thing to do, and that is why I'm voting in the negative. Thank you. I wonder how many two of your constituents that are watching this right now would be thinking, oh, yeah, I would love to give more of my money to the state of New York so that the, uh, people running for office can put all those commercials on TV that we see every October. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, for goodness sakes, I don't think anybody watching would, would be thinking that that's the, a good thing to do. Uh, exactly. And what this bill doesn't do is it doesn't limit at all people like George Soros. They can come in with their independent expenditures and pump millions of dollars into political campaigns at will. It doesn't limit the ability of unions to fund this at will and do whatever they want to do. So it's the wrong way to go. And I think you don't have to look much further than to say, hey, Sheldon Silver's in favor. This is probably wrong for upstate New York and really wrong for all of New York. It is an incumbent reelection scheme. Uh, it is not the answer to our problems. The answer to the problems that New Yorkers face is sending people with ethics and honesty here to do the people's work and stop sending people that are ethically compromised and here just to make a buck for themselves. That's the real problem. And my call to people constantly is you have to get involved. You got to find people that you want to help get elected and you have to find people that you want to work against. It's up to the people out there to turn this state around because clearly this assembly and senate is not going to police themselves correctly. We've always said an informed electorate is the most important thing that we could have in this state, but that means an informed New York City electorate is, is going to, I don't know how you are going to pull that off. Well, I mean, there's a hope springs eternal, and I would say, uh, you know, it's tough. It's difficult to overcome. If you look at uh, somebody like Mr. Boylan that we were just talking about, he won his reelection with over 90 percent of the vote. How is that possible that a man under this level of scrutiny, under indictment after indictment, mail fraud, corruption, all kinds of problems, wins with 90 percent? I don't understand the mentality down there of that electorate that would send somebody back to do, uh, to do their work. Uh, and I know there's plenty of good people down there that, that would represent that district very well. And it's time for one of them to step up and run. You, we were short on time. You mentioned uh, recall elections as yeah. a proposal, one idea up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. uh, what else would there, we've heard about uh, forfeiture of public pensions yeah. maybe, the yeah, term limits? That's a great idea. I think that, well, all of the above. We should limit absolutely, especially the people of, in leadership. You should not be the speaker or the majority leader of the Senate or the Assembly for 20 years. That's really ridiculous. The president can serve eight. They should serve no more than eight. That's one idea. Taking away pensions and putting us as elected officials into a 401k, that would be a big plus. Recall would be a big plus. All of those are solid ideas that would help stem the tide of corruption here. But sadly, and not surprisingly, Sheldon Silver doesn't want any of this to happen. So where does the problem lie? It's, it's right there for not getting it to the floor. Let it get to the floor, let the people vote, let the people decide, and let those members of the assembly stand up and be counted. And maybe if you had that turnover in leadership, some of these ideas might find their way, because there are, there are bills here, folks, that haven't made it to the light of day on the floor of the assembly for many years, because Speaker Silver has that control. It's such a strong, centralized form of leadership he, in the state government. He controls everything, every piece of legislation that gets to the floor. But isn't it funny that when the stuff uh, got really bad with uh, Vito Lopez, suddenly he didn't know anything. He didn't know what was going on. That's an interesting technique. Steve McLaughlin, always uh, an interesting program. Thanks for joining us thank today. Uh, we want to thank Assemblyman uh, McLaughlin for joining us. We want to thank you folks uh, out there for spending your time with us today. We'll hope to see you all soon for our next edition of Assembly Calendar.